please welcome our final speaker of the night, Mrs. Macias. I have a very vivid memory of being 11 years old. I was sitting in our car, white Beretta, red pinstripe, two doors. I remember staring at her. She had a pink coat on, her hair is super blonde, and I thought, she's so smart. She speaks so many different languages. She works so hard. She works so hard. She didn't hear anything like that that day. Instead, she heard the 11-year-old me say, Ma, why are you a teacher? She looked at me, and she laughed, and she said, you sound like your father. I said, that's not good enough. I need an answer. All you do is work for those kids. You're at school all the time. What do they give you? What do they do? I need to know right now. I wasn't very nice. She looks at me and she smiles and this time attempts to give me an answer. It's my passion. I love it. Blah, 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 blah. It's all I heard. I sat there. She tried to explain to me why she gave so much to her students, but I wasn't listening. I was actually making a pact with myself, a promise, a vow that I would never, ever, ever grow up and be a teacher. So, 16 years I've been here at North High School, most of my life. I graduated college and I started teaching. How did I get here? What happened? That girl did not want to teach. That girl made a promise. Why did I break it? For 16 years, I've answered questions. Why do you teach? And my answers are, it's my passion, I love students, and sometimes you sound like my father. So, tonight, I thought about it for the speech, how, why, I got to this point. What did my mom know? Heck, what does Oprah Winfrey know about teaching? If you don't know who she is, go Google her. But, <laughs> Oprah tells everyone, if I were an Oprah, I'd be a teacher. I would be helping the youth. I'd be shaping their lives. <sighs> what does she know? If she had told that 11-year-old that she wanted to be a teacher, I could have given her a whole mouthful. But maybe she had something. Maybe my mom knew something. Why am I here? So I thought about it. How can I explain to somebody that feeling I get when I'm in a classroom? How can I tell someone what, tell someone what it's like to work with a student. Here we go. I'm gonna give you the best analogy I have, so work with me. Imagine you're sitting in the bleachers and your child gets up to bat and gets a hit. And as a parent, you know that you've been at the batting cage for weeks. You've spent coin after coin after coin. <sighs> they got the hit. Or they get the catch that wins the game. They hit the goal into the net. They hit the high note, where they remember all their lines at the school play. Parents sit back. When you kids do that, when you got your college admissions and somebody said they wanted you, your, your parents got that letter and thought, oh, they are so wonderful. They are so great. I did that. But they didn't say that to you. When you came off that field, when you got that letter, they looked at you and they told you they were proud of you, that you have worked so hard and that you deserve every moment you get, and to keep working and to keep being the best that you can be. It's kind of like teaching. That moment that you succeed, I never feel better. Calling you to tell you you got 100 on the regions, that you passed, that your research paper blew me away. I helped you, but I never say that. I take two steps back and I watch your success. I love every moment of it. It's what Oprah knows. It's what she thinks teaching is. Oprah has her favorite things and she gives cars away and people scream and they dance and they cheer and they love her and she stands in her audience like this. <laughs> and she goes, I did that. Look how happy they are. Yeah, they're happy because you gave them a car. You gave them a cashmere sweater. What Oprah doesn't know is that teachers, we don't give you guys cars. We give you us. We give you our time. We give you our knowledge. And you give us those moments. I'm Oprah on a stage every day. And I love it. 
The other part that Oprah doesn't know is that sometimes it doesn't always work. Sometimes you don't make the catch, you don't hit that high note, and everyone hears it. Sometimes a college says they don't want you, or a bunch of mics don't work. I mean, at that point, parents, teachers, we do the same thing. We take three steps forward. It's our fault. We're sorry. We will fix it, and it doesn't matter. We will move on. It's the hard part of teaching, giving those phone calls that they might have to go to summer school or that their research paper wasn't very good. But we know that we'll get you to work harder, to be better, to do more. That's really what we want. She didn't get that. She didn't understand that. About a week ago, I was on the phone with my professor from college. We talk now and then, and it's interesting. He knows people from Congress, and he's a great guy. But we're on the phone, and he brings up with me a couple things that are funny. He tells me where I sat. He asks me about the boy who sat next to me, who's now my husband. And he tells me that he knew we were going to last before we had any idea. He asks me about my kids. And then he says, are you still playing tennis? Don't let those boys get in the way. You've got to get out there. You were good. Keep playing. We're on the phone, and I'm blushing. I'm smiling. I'm having a moment. He asks me how it feels to be so successful. <sighs> me? Successful? That's a great teacher. I felt so good. But interesting, I'm writing this speech, and he actually helps me. He asked me if I remember when I came in and told him and the other teachers that I had decided that I was going to teach at Clarkstown North. I said, I don't, I don't know if I remember. And he said, no, you remember. You came in. We were telling you about a doctor program in the city for history, talking about law school. And you chimed in and said, no, I'm done. I signed a contract. North of the Tappan Zee, town called Clarkstown, they've got two high schools, North. They were happy. He told me when I walked out, they were thrilled. They knew I wouldn't be back. I must have said something to him, like, I'll see you in a few years. I'll go back to the doctorate, maybe law school. When I left, he and the other professors said they knew I wouldn't be back, that they knew I would be here forever. I didn't know that, but they're right. 16 years, I'm still here. I'm still loving every moment of it. So how did I get here? What did he know? What does Oprah know? What did my mom know? that I still think about. I grew up in a house that my mother gave everything to me, my brother, and the thousands of students that went through her doors. She not only taught them languages, she planned proms. She took them to Virginia Beach as seniors. I don't know who would do that. <laughs> she did everything they asked. She went to every basketball game. And this was our life. We grew up with that. How could I be anything else? 10 years ago, my mother had a surgery, and it was very scary. She's fine, but it was scary. My brother and I visited her in the hospital before. We talked to her, we held her hand, we kissed her. And the nurse comes in, you know, has to, they have to leave, and my brother and I are holding hands and tears in our eyes. And the nurse pushes her, looks down and says, hey, Miss G, Miss Gregory, how are you doing? My mother looked at her and said, I'm fine, Lisa. How are you? What have you been up to? Oh, not much, Miss G. I, I'm working here now. This is great. Since we graduated, I got this. And they walked down the hallway. And my brother and I, holding hands, looked at each other. Of course. Of course. A student feels her out. Of course. She doesn't tell the student how scared she is. She says she's fine and asks her how she is. That 11-year-old tried to stop it, but sometimes you can't. You sometimes grow up to be just like your parents. I'm so grateful I grew up to be just like my mom, the best teacher I ever had. I hope we inspired you tonight. Enjoy.